good evening and welcome to the Super License F1 podcast. My name is Rodney. My name is Zach. We're back! 2019, Zachary. What do those numbers mean to you? They mean to me the future. Like, oh my goodness, Rod, I can remember putting on my year 2000 millennial millennium sunglasses <laughs> at, the, you know, at the turn of the millennia. And yeah. um, I never, I didn't even think about getting to the 20s. Tw- We're going to live in the 20s soon, Rod. The 20s. Oh man, what a time to be alive. Oh, so insane. And after what has been, you know, it was a, it was a really great 2018 season. The 29 season, 2019 season is shaping up so beautifully, Rod. I'm really amped. It's really exciting to be talking about Formula One again. It's been—it's always nice to have a break, but it is always nice when uh, you start seeing cars rolling and the launches. And I mean, it's just happened uh, just today. This is uh, what, what do we say? The Friday before the race. Uh, you start seeing those social media posts from you know, Valtteri Bottas under a bridge in Melbourne and all the teams <laughs> are starting to arrive in Sydney. And it's just, I just love those local social posts. That is always, well, I, I get that that only applies if you live here, but uh, it still makes me feel good to start seeing everyone coming in. Yeah, and it's something that everyone can share whenever the race kind of comes. If you're lucky enough to have a race in your own country or region, yeah, it's, it's very, it warms the, cost, the cockles of your heart. The cockles? Co- what part good. of the cockles? Cockles? The uh, I think they're next to the what's-its and they're... Uh, uh, yeah. the thingamas. Well, mm-hmm. Rod, you know, have you shaken off your summer hibernation or winter as it is up here in the proper northern hemisphere? And <laughs> you're, and yep. you're uh, you know, <laughs> and, you know, totally refreshed for a... For not just a 2019 season, but a 2019 run of Super Licensed Podcasts. Yeah, absolutely. And we've got plenty to get through today. So we will uh, have a quick chat with a quick guest to run through all of the things that you have to know from testing. And then we will uh, have a bit of a chat about the year ahead. And then we'll talk about what it means for the show. And then we're we'll finishing with some F1 Dreams today. So let's, let's crack on because there's a lot to get to. Let's start with a bit of an F1 chat. And to make, uh, just to make things interesting, we've got someone a bit different, a bit original. It's our old mate, Abhishek Takle from Midday. So let's kick into our F1 chat with Abhishek. Welcome to F1 Chats. So testing has been run and done and here to talk to us and and explain what the hell we need to know before the first race is the one and only Abhishek Takle. Abhishek, how are you going? Hey everyone, I'm great. Uh, Thanks for having me on the show. It's my my podcast debut with you guys, so (laughs) it's amazing to be on. Absolute pleasure. And as I as I informed everybody, going forward, it's uh, influencers only on the podcast. People of high note and uh, people who will definitely, you know, raise our profile. But I'm sure that the listeners will enjoy all of your insights, and they will love following your coverage throughout the year with midday. Is that correct? Yep, midday and and a few other publications. It's primarily midday. Yeah. Follow you on Twitter probably for all of the hot links to all of the hot takes. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> um, it's it's at Abhishek underscore Takde, but I haven't really tweeted anything in since October really. So I would say uh, get I would on say that. Possibly. Get on that. It's a quiet <laughs> time. <laughs> it's a quiet time. Yeah. Championship was already uh, pretty much decided back then, so it didn't make sense to tweet anything out. You know, so. Yeah. I mean, hopefully we'll we'll still be tweeting after something like July this season. Hopefully we'll get a little Brilliant. bit more out of this season. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, hopefully, testing. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure where you want to start, Zach. Do you have any? Where do you want to start? And anything you want to probe Abhishek about? Yeah, let's start. Let's start with I think Williams because I, this is the this is the big story I think out of testing in that they are a bit of a non-event that they turned up late to testing. Um, Claire Williams um, was like obviously distressed about their lack of of performance or their lack of even being there really on the first day. Um, and then since then, uh, their technical chief and star of the, the technicalities of Formula One and the Formula One paddock, Paddy Lowe, has been put out on gardening leave or is taking a leave of absence. Um, you know, they performed so poorly last season. Abhishek, I'd love to hear what, what, what do you think is going to happen to Williams this year? Um, I don't think anybody knows. And, and the fact that you said, you know, there was sort of the non-event, the fact that we're opening the 2019 season podcast with a, with a non-event. I mean, I hope <laughs> we don't have too many non-events throughout the year, but... Uh, <laughs> But no, but you're oh. right. I mean, that was the big story because everybody else basically turned up and surprisingly ran fairly reliably. Uh, Williams stuck out and stood out for not not doing so. A, for not turning up. And then when they did turn up, they were slow. And, and also, uh, they, they had to sort of stop their program early because of something Paddy Lowe said was, I don't, know, I don't know, a degradation of essential parts or something, whatever that means. Um, 
fun. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, nobody knows. I don't think they know how the season's going to pan out. But last year, as you say, they performed. They had a dismal year, and you you think you know it would only be up from there, but turns out you know it's not. And um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what sort of a year they've got because they're obviously uh, not only were they late, but they were also off the pace. Um, and they've 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 not got anywhere near the mileage they've hoped for uh, going into Melbourne. Obviously, a particular concern for uh, George Russell, who's a rookie, but also for Robert Kubica, who's making a comeback after after eight years out. I mean, and and, and this is a man who's making a comeback from uh, from a, a past, from, from from a rally injury, from, from a horrific rally crash where he almost severed his he partially severed his right arm, really. So. Um, so he would have certainly liked more time in the car to test his reactions to sort of get back into the, uh, you know, in, into the groove, so to say. Although he has yeah. tested, yeah. Because he's the. I mean, this is something that Williams were excited about for this season is that they've got George Russell, who's an absolute rookie. How much information he'll be able to give them to improve the car is probably very small compared to what Robert Kubica, who's going to be able to give so much more due to his experience, his leadership skills, and and purely his. Is the level of feedback he'll be able to give will be enormous. I mean, he he was on record very early saying like there was nothing I could. There's, we did almost no time in the car and there was nothing to say. Like it, it wasn't very good. He's in the last couple of days he said the improvements they've made makes it drivable. I mean, I would hope that it was drivable, um, <laughs> but yeah, it, you know this. I mean, there's already been talk. This if if they don't find more funding, you know, they with. Um, with Lance Stroll and, and his dad's company's money leaving the team, um, it just seems like Williams are in, in real dire straits. And I I really wonder if they're going to see this, if, if this might be, I'm going to call it, this could be Williams' last season in Formula 1 if things continue to move at this, this pace so badly. Um, I, I I probably wouldn't go so far as to say <laughs> it could be the last season in Formula 1, simply because you know they, they have all of that history Remember, they are a multiple, multiple championship winning team. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's 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 they've fallen, they've fallen a long way from 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 their peak. And I remember, I was I was I was in Abu Dhabi when sort of they announced Kubica, when they confirmed Kubica for 2019, and there was a real sense of optimism. All, all of the talk was about how yes, we've had a bad year, but we'll turn the page on it. And you know, the Kubica announcement was you know part of the puzzle, part of sort of turning turning the page on 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 a terrible year. Uh, but it's not gone to plan. But you know, let's see. It's it's. I I really don't want to simply because of the history and you know what they mean to Formula One and to fans around the world. I I don't want to write them off. Uh, I don't want you know in terms of their survival just yet. I think it's really <laughs> disappointing, awesome. especially for Kubica, because it was meant to be. No one expected that he was going to come back and start winning races, but I think everyone hoped that he would be in something like a competitive car. I think the disappointing test from Williams is not a good sign for anyone hoping for big things from Kubica because, uh, I mean, with the poor performance that they've shown and then with Paddy Lowe leaving, he was supposedly the guy who was spearheading their resurgence, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, with him gone, there's no real clear path of anyone driving, uh, you know, bringing the vision that they need to actually get them back into contention. So I don't know if you have any other insights about it. Obviously, it takes more than one man to turn a team around. <laughs> yeah. it, takes, it, takes, it takes a deep bench of, of technicians and engineers to to bring that vision to life. But he was supposed to be the guy with the vision. So with Paddy Lowe out of the way, uh, is there any hope of salvation for this season? Look, it's like you say, I mean, uh, Paddy Lowe's cop a lot of flack uh, over over the last season and this, and and whatever and the preseason this year uh, and rightly so because he's sort of been the lightning rod because as as leader as technical leader and who's supposed to have the vision as you say um, you know he 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 will naturally be that lightning lightning rod but um, but you know he's a very intelligent uh, person he's a very intelligent engineer remember he was part of winning teams at Williams previously yes. and then obviously it's also started, really. Yeah, exactly. So uh, he and, and also, at, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, and of course also at Mercedes. I mean, he was part of the he was part of the sort of the the management there. I mean, the total before Toto took over as you know overall team principal. Um, so yeah, so he is an intelligent guy, and he has copped a lot of flack. But I think you know, and I've I've I've, I've heard this said as well that if the the rot has to run deeper than simply Paddy Low because. You know, it's it's a team that needs an overhaul. It's not just it's not just a question of one mm. man who's sort of failed in his technical leadership being moved out and uh, 
and and everything's all right again. I don't I, I don't think it's that simple. No, and I think uh, obviously, as you say, he was one of the ingredients that led to the Mercedes, you know, dominance of the last five years, six years or so. Um, yeah. Coming to Mercedes and trying to move on to maybe a brighter note, the big talk has been how smoothly everything seems to be going for Ferrari and how Mercedes, after not a shaky testing, but obviously a less than dominant testing performance from Mercedes, they seem to have clawed it back and be now very close, maybe not quite uh, on, on level pegging with Ferrari, but within a few tenths. And the takeaway that I have seen and heard from testing is that Ferrari have been able to more or less pretty smoothly run their programs and set the pace. Mercedes have been able to more or less keep pace with them, but it's been a lot more of a struggle and it's taken a lot more effort to get to that level. So, uh, I mean, that might be a sign that the car, again, is one that's a little bit tricky to get on top of as it has been for the last few years to get the performance. Is that how you see it? Um, well, I think this has been uh, Mercedes's, uh, I guess, most challenging preseason since they started dominating. And, and by that, by that, I don't mean the slow by any stretch of the imagination. Mm-hmm. Challenging relative to their earlier preseasons, which were obviously, as you as you said, dominant. Um, but I think, but I think, you know, Mercedes uh, didn't show their hand until very late into the preseason tests. I think it was only on the final day that they uh, did a proper proper flying lap, you know, proper performance run. Um, and, and and Hamilton ended up about uh, 3,000 short of Vettel's time. So that was the only time it, it was testing that they really showed their hand. And we don't know how much of that hand they've actually shown. Uh, and a team that, uh, because most of the testing, they were occupying the bottom of the timesheets, which suggested they were doing long run work, performance work, you know, fine tuning the car, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. And that suggests a team that is confident in its own abilities. And uh, remember, this is a team that's won uh, five straight uh, title doubles. And even if they are slightly on the back foot to begin with, um, I expect them to be sort of fully in the title fight uh, as they were last year. Because last year they went in supposedly on the back foot. And then they turned up at Melbourne. And then they, they, they whatever, Lewis Hamilton switched on his party mode or whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> And blitzed everybody in qualifying. Yeah. Of course, we, we, we saw a very close season, the neck and neck season. But what we also saw was a Mercedes team that was uh, far more well-drilled, far more better organized, far more better at sort of winning championships than Ferrari was. We also saw how quickly they can bring ideas and changes to the table. You know, the pure might of the, the Mercedes Formula One unit and probably Mercedes factory overall was the difference between all the changes they were able to make between the first and second parts of testing you know they mm. the package looks so neat and so tight um you know a lot of talk has just been about how efficient their car looks and i, I saw talk today of just to be compared to last year's car like last year's car looks kind of fumbly and and over, and way too overblown whereas this year's car just looks so tight um you know is this something that we should be concerned about when you look down the field that you know is at someone like Red Bull are they going to be kind of the best of the rest again or do you expect Red Bull and and then their burgeoning partnership with Honda to be a, a true challenger to the to the top of the table? Um, going into testing, I would have said Red Bull are the big unknown because of their partnership with Honda. But surprisingly, Honda have had an amazing preseason. I mean, who would have expected them to run as trouble-free as they did? I mean, whatever mileage they they, they lost out on, I mean, I, I'm talking about the Honda engine specifically, uh, lo- they, they lost out on because of non-Honda issues like Pierre Gasly's crash, for example, uh, which also which also had a knock-on effect on Max Verstappen's program the next day. Um, but Red Bull, I think, um, yeah, I mean, I think they will still be, uh, they're still slightly trading uh, Mercedes and Ferrari. I don't see them being sort of title contenders, but they will win races this year, I think. Two two teams that seem to have done pretty well out of testing are Haas and Renault, and it seems like they're the two that are probably just pulling slightly ahead of the midfield, the rest of the midfield, in terms of nipping nipping at the heels of the top three. Um, It's obviously hopeful signs for Ricardo, who's left Red Bull to go to Renault, and hopefully we're going to see them, them fighting a little bit. Is it a bit hard, though, to sort of determine the field when i mean it's just testing at the end of the day and you sort of don't want to get too carried away with your testing times we might show up in melbourne and the whole grid could be scrambled is you could look at haas's preseason from last year for evidence of that um is there any signs that haas maybe have uh put in or learn learn, perhaps learn the lessons from their previous preseasons and hopefully when they, they line up in melbourne that we might see a bit of a better performance from them this time 
Uh, well, only 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 the pit stops at Melbourne will tell if they've they've learned lessons from last year. But I mean, I got all of my fingers and toes crossed. Too nasty about it, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. So uh, no, I think I think look, I mean, testing is always difficult to read uh, for all of the you know the, the usual reasons about how everyone's doing their own thing, running their own programs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But when you look at the midfield, especially now, especially last year and this year, it's even more difficult to read. Haas, uh, Renault, uh, Toro Rosso, and McLaren are all, uh, I think, within within the same tenth of each other. Uh, and then you got a bit of a gap uh, to Alfa Romeo. But but yeah, it's going to be an incredibly close, incredibly close midfield again. And I think, but I think I do think Renault and Haas are going to edge it. Uh, but Renault for Renault, it's a crucial year. It's a crucial year because you know mm-hmm. they, they've they've sort of been developing. They've been on this upward sort of trajectory. They're building up to a title challenge. I think 2021 is what they've. Given themselves, uh, set themselves as a, as the year they should be fighting for the title. Uh, of course, we don't know the rules uh, that they will be racing to in 2021. But I mean, you know, so this is this is now the 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 the, the closer they get to the front, the the, the harder it's going to get for them to keep their progress going. Uh, so this is going to be a crucial year for them because obviously they've signed Daniel Ricciardo, so they have to now give him uh, the equipment also to sort of justify his talent. Because, yeah, they're not going to start winning straight away or something like that. I mean, Ricardo probably won't win the race this year as he did with Red Bull. But, uh, but yeah, but they need to start. They, they need to show clear progress this year. I mean, Nico Hulkenberg surely would be hoping for a podium. Please, <laughs> just one in my career. He's going the longest. He's, a, he's he won the one. Yeah. Oh, God. When you look at it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Do we? I mean, there, there is a lot. It feels like there's a lot of rookies around, and as you said, the the, the young guys are always having are already having impact on teams like Red Bull's ability to run testing properly. Is it perhaps in Renault's favour then that they've got you know as far as looking at the team scope, they've got very experienced and almost no liabilities in their lineup at all, and it's, it's something that's being talked about as possibly Renault's opportunity to just have a very consistent year is do you see any do you, do you see, think that's the case and do you see any problems with say ferrari with you know charlotte Claire really stepping up to what could be a championship winning car no i think you're absolutely right uh, i i do think renault have got a great driver lineup they've they, they definitely yes they, they don't have uh, the same lineup they did last year but they've got you know the speed and experience for ricardo and the speed and experience of a Nico Hulkenberg, so they should definitely be making progress uh, because if in in Hulkenberg and Ricardo, they've got two very technically gifted drivers as well who are great at developing a car. So uh, they, they they've got that. But you know, for for Ferrari and 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 look, you it, it's a great thing you've got all these new guys coming in. I mean, you've got we we went through a phase in Formula One where all the sort of the old guys were blocking up seats for and, and stopping new guys from coming in basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think we're through that because. Look at the look at the rookies. Well, not rookies, but look at all the young guys lining up uh, this year. I mean, you got Leclerc in a Ferrari, you got Verstappen. He's still a young guy, and Gasly together uh, at Red Bull. You've got uh, Albon in uh, the Toro Rosso, uh, Russell, Lando Norris, and uh, I think I read this quote from George Russell somewhere where he said, uh, you know, they, they 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 all they're all mates because they've they've all raced each other mm-hmm. and they are, and he hopes that they can be sort of the next generation of F1 coming through which I think would be spectacular because these are all I think this is the first time we've seen so many drivers graduate from uh, GP3 F2 you know into Formula 1 around the same time it's sort of yeah so it does seem like the next generation is coming on um there will be problems for Ferrari, I think, with their lineup though because I don't know how Vettel will react to like that's going to be one of the big stories of 2019, uh, because we know Vettel doesn't do too well under pressure. He's not great under pressure, and Clerk's uh, like Clerk's already well nested within the team because he's been part of the Ferrari family uh, for quite a while. Mm, that's um, true. They like him. They really like him. Um, he's not the driver Vettel wanted as his teammate. And remember what happened to Vettel when Ricardo was moved up to Red Bull uh, in 2014 when Weber left. So. So yeah, I think I think that's going to be an interesting dynamic right there, uh, the Leclerc battle battle especially. It's somewhere that Mercedes have kind of got like that locked down, right? All they're hoping from Bottas is that he will you know, kind of hold down second or third or, or podiums for Mercedes, whilst Hamilton just is definitely number one there. I could, but at Ferrari, you could see Leclerc kind of 
operating under the idea that there is no number one driver at Ferrari and that he's just going to push. I mean, Ferrari have come out apparently and said that uh, you know they're free to race, which is what every yeah. team says. Yeah, um, that's the that's standard line. But I, I can't, I can't really see that happening at, 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 in Vettel's eyes. Um, but yeah, exactly as you say, Rob. For now, for, but <laughs> when the lights go out, and that'll. Yeah, I think that there's an asterisk next to that. And the asterisk is uh, until we're in contention and then whichever driver is ahead, brackets Vettel, uh, gets preferential <laughs> treatment. But look, let's let's just enjoy the battle while it starts and let's not make any assumptions until it's uh, until we've seen what, what happens on track. I guess I wanted to maybe finish the testing talk with um, a bit of a reflection on where McLaren are at because I think the two disappointments from last year were... Williams and McLaren, two teams that have great reputation and resources but didn't really deliver. It seems as though it's a tale of opposites where Williams are disappointing this year and in a really sad state, but McLaren seems to have uh, at least, you know, impressions would be that they've turned things around a little bit. Um, obviously, topping the timesheets a few times. Again, don't read anything into that. But just, I think it might have surprised a few people to have Fernando Alonso in the grid, especially with the sort of you know, half statements from last year, like, oh, if the car's good, I might come back one day and he's going to do a test eventually. So uh, I feel like McLaren, there's a bit of a, there's some positivity around McLaren, whether that turns into, you know, a bit of hype, whether it turns into some sponsors signing, I don't know. Obviously that's what they're hoping for. But do you think that uh, they can turn any of that momentum into performance or is it going to be another quiet year for McLaren? Uh, I think, yeah, uh, for McLaren, I think they should be solidly in the midfield. I, I, I do think they will have a better year than last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, part of that is also relative to expectations. Last year, they, they switched engines, they ditched Honda for Renault, and they went in saying, oh, we're going to be on the podium. <laughs> and, uh, and instead, what happened was, you know, you saw how bad that car truly was. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they saw how bad that car truly was when they, they'd been saying they thought they had the best chassis. But the Honda had been holding them back, etc. That was not it. Yeah, that was not it, exactly. So I think they'll have a solid year. There is definitely an upward momentum about the team. There's there's a feeling. And it's not the it's not the lap times and testing, because again, you know, they're not going to be on pole in Australia or something. So those those lap times mean very little. But um but I think, you know, the the fact that you mentioned the Lonzo is gone, that's also a key part of it because uh, there is there doesn't seem to be sort of it doesn't seem to be a pressure cooker environment anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, there's always the pressure that comes with you know uh, with with not uh, giving a two-time world champion regarded by not regarded by many and also himself as a as the most talented driver on the grid, not giving him the equipment to show his talent or worthy of his talent. And there's always pressure that comes with that. But Alonso is also an individual who creates a lot of friction and pressure around himself, you know. So, you know, through his comments in the media, through, you know, for instance, like uh, when he gave uh, Monaco a skip to go and race in Indy, mm-hmm. you know, all of these things, um, there's, there's a bit, bit of a diva, divaness to him, which, which, won't be, which won't be in McLaren anymore. And that tends to be sort of, so that toxicity won't, won't be in the team anymore. So it's like a fresh start. They've got Carlos Sainz, who's a very likable, very likable driver, very likable person. Got the rookie Lando Norris, who's again an extremely likable and accessible sort of a personality. So I think uh, it's 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 a fresh start for them. And they're not the key thing is they're not setting any expectations for this year. Not they're not making any predictions. Yeah, that's true. And if you keep the Fred of Frogs flowing, positive things can only happen. Um, I wanted to just spend the last couple of minutes talking about your outlandish predictions for the year. So this is your opportunity. You have a platform here to make a bold statement, a bold claim for what you think might come true. No one's going to hold you to it. But man, if it come, if it actually turns out, imagine how amazing you're going to look. So this is your chance. What do you think is going to happen this year? Oh, I think... Um... I want to say Charles Leclerc is going to win the championship. <laughs> oh, man. So I, I shouldn't laugh, but that is funny. <laughs> no, do yeah, it. Yeah, I like I'll that. back that. But, I mean, that's the sort of answer I was looking for, for sure. <laughs> what will, what will but, that do to Ferrari? Will Vettel just, like, will he just retire from Formula 1 believe, if that happens? Yeah. Well, no. What will it do to Ferrari is it'll give them their first title in 10 years. But True. Uh, Vettel, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to do to Vettel. Or Leclerc. It didn't yeah. turn out so well for Kimi when he won the title there either. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that might be the curse. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, look, Aston answered. I couldn't have asked for a better answer, to be honest. That's just with a pinch of salt, obviously. That's just of course. With a pinch of, of, salt. Course. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Don't hold me to it. Yeah. We won't. We won't. We Give us that Twitter again so it. that we can hold you to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, a more realistic prediction, I'd say... I think I think this 
could be Fettel's year. I mean, um, Hamilton's in the form of his life. Um, Hamilton's at the top of his game. We saw that last year. But I think it could be Vettel's year. And I, and I, I, do, I, I kind of want it to be his year because he's, you know, it's, been, it's, it's, it's his fifth season at Ferrari now. Um, he's, made, he's made his mistakes. He's you know, thrown points away last year. Crucial ones. Cost him the championship. Uh, but I think he's... There, there, there seems to be sort of uh, this positivity about him uh, uh, in, in pre-season testing and all of that. And I think he's, he's had a good winter. He's sort of reset himself. And, and there's obviously uh, the environment at Ferrari, like at McLaren, is very different. It's a very uh, engaging and open and friendly environment. So I think it could be his year. Nice. He stole my Charles Leclerc one. I, you know, I want him to win the championship. <laughs> no, uh, oh, what do I think? What is going to happen? I think that I think that Renault is going to come third in the championship above Red Bull. I think that Red Bull is going to have a really like patchy season. I think that you know, there's with uh, Verstappen and Gasly in that team. I think they're going to butt heads. I think we're going to see. Some some problems with Honda at some point, definitely. But Renault, I think you're just going to play it super cool, super calm, and just get two cars home every weekend. So yeah, <laughs> Renault for third in the championship. Wow, interesting. I, All right, well, that's a good one. I'd like that. <laughs> oh, there we go. My outlandish, See, right? my outlandish claim is the return of Valtteri Bottas. He's going to come second in the championship, no matter who oh. wins. He's going to come second. <laughs> That's a, that's, I mean, it shows where he stands that I'm not bold enough to claim that he'll win, but he'll come, some, come second to someone. <laughs> Both a second. There you go. Well, Abhishek, it's been uh, an absolute pleasure having you on, and I'm glad. I mean, likewise, we've known you for a while. Be you've, been, yeah. you've been an unofficial friend of the program. Now you're an official friend of the program. I'm glad we could make that's it all, all, yeah. uh, all happen. Well, thank, uh, thank, you, you thank you so much for your insights. Awesome. Absolute yeah. pleasure, man. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Bye. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye. What a good chat. It's, I feel so much more uh, informed now. I feel like we made some fantastic predictions about what's going to happen that are definitely going to come true, especially yours. So now we know everything that we need to know about testing, Zach. Uh, we've got the rest of the show to do. <laughs> so <laughs> what lies ahead for us? <laughs> exactly. We've got a grab bag of things that we want to announce, talk about, a bunch of pressing business, things that, things that we're going to be uh, doing this year. And where are we going to go? We're going to start with an update about the Super License Club. So uh, a lot of you will know Super License is an independent operation and we rely on the very generous uh, support of club members who donate a few dollars every month to keep everything running, keep the lights on, keep us from sleeping under the overpass. And uh, we've introduced new levels this year, so it's easier than ever to get involved. It's $1 a month just to get involved. Chip us a, chip us a tip. is like tip your barman if you're at the bar and you can support us for $1 a month if you have the means. And if you do so wish, you can support us for a very generous $5 a month, which is what's that's the level that's going to get you bonus podcasts, bonus content, and lots of really good stuff. These are $10 a month plan. What's the difference between the $5 a month and the $10 a month? Absolutely nothing. What do you get extra? Absolutely nothing. We'll, we'll throw you a thank you or something. But that's for people who have said, hey, I really want to give you a little bit more. Can I do that? Now you can do that. $1 a month, $5 a month, or $10 a month will get you into the club. Uh, we're going to be doing, this is important, going to be doing a giveaway. <laughs> so uh, this year, <laughs> we have sourced from our friends at Project Carve some awesome looking wooden coasters. So they've got our little uh, F1 driver logo on there. And they're, these, these are like, these are made with love. I can't even stress how beautiful these things are. They're uh, so set beautiful. Of four. You, you sent me a picture <laughs> yeah. what, a couple of days ago and I was oh, like, man. what is this? Yeah. Where did these come from? <laughs> <laughs> is this some professional thing that's ripped off our logo? No, that's our logo <laughs> on a real thing. Uh, set, of, set of four coasters. We've got 10 to give away for, for new and old club members. So look again, never been a better time to join. Doesn't matter what level you join at, you're in the running to get you some sweet coasters. And uh, speaking of, I was speaking of, we are offering some bonus content for people who support us at the $5 a month or above level. And obviously the big thing that everyone's talking about this weekend is the launch of the new F1 Netflix series. Zach, are we going to do a special episode about that? Oh yeah, man. I, any excuse to sit down and try and watch all of that in, is it all coming out at once? I can't remember. Is that a, or are they well, they're not? What are they doing? I've seen people talk about the first episode, but that's only because I literally went live about two hours ago as of time of yeah. recording, so I haven't even had a chance to check it out myself. I imagine Netflix style that it's all out there, because why wouldn't it be? But mm. uh, once it's once we've had a chance to digest it, we're going to be doing a one-off uh, podcast episode for all the club members covering our thoughts and takeaways from that series. It's going to be exciting. 
so exciting. If only we could have, I would have loved to have been able to just watch it together, but, you know, maybe we'll watch the next season together. We'll, we'll book a, a, a little retreat together or something. But no, I'm excited to watch that. And, I'm, <laughs> wow. you know, it's going to be, I'm sure it'll be a robust discussion. We've always loved talking about, <laughs> especially TV shows um, and our differing opinions. So I'm sure it'll be heated. Oh, I see what you're saying. I have to bring some controversial opinions. Okay, we'll do. That shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> that won't be hard. Um, some more changes around the super license uh, world. So we have been running for the last bunch of years <laughs> two different mm, competitions. Let's say one is a fantasy league. You know where you pick your drivers, you score points, you get your results at the end of the race. Everyone knows how fantasy works. We also have been running predictions on our show, and it it's been a fantastic way for us to engage with you and get people involved. And it's um, it's been something that um, that we've we've sort of been managing both, but only one has had a has a voice and a life on the podcast, and we want to fix that. So the way we're going to fix it is we're going to double down on fantasy. So fantasy, the fantasy league where we've been doing it again is it's not a new thing. We've been doing it for years and years. But all you need to do to join if you want to play is go to fantasygp.com. You use the code. I'm going to read it out. So uh, we'll tweet it out. We've put it on on our Facebook presence, but. I'm going to read it out if you happen to have your phone in front of you right now and you want to type it in. 5328208. Simple as that. It's the same number of donuts I've eaten in my life. 5328208. That's how you can remember it. Um, so you join the Super License League there and you set your team. You can make changes throughout the year and it's winner take all, do or die. Uh, fantasy showdown now uh, we're going to try and fit in a fantasy focus segment in the show we'll see how that goes call out people who are doing really well maybe offer some tips in fact oh, i'm probably yeah. going to be the one looking for tips so if anyone wants to send some in please feel free but this is also to say thanks so much for playing predictions with us for the last bunch of years we're really looking forward to changing up the show reinventing it this is really a, a reinvigoration of the show and uh, we're going to be doing fantasy instead of predictions going forward so yeah good? Yeah, it does. I mean, it's something that I wanted to take a special mention that I've, you know, we've really loved doing the predictions and hearing everybody's voices on the show and everything like that. It's, you know, it's, we think that the fantasy GP stuff is going to be a really fun way to get everybody involved. And the other thing I wanted to say about it was that um, often fantasy can seem a little bit like, oh, am I that into Formula One or, you know, can I, can I really run a fantasy team? You know, what will my team think of me? All those kinds of things. It's not hard. It's so easy to get involved. It's really fun. And even if you miss, you know, let's say, you know, you've got friends who, you know, are like, oh, I, I, but I had, didn't, wasn't there for the first race or whatever it was. Still let it kill them to get involved because it's so much fun to track <laughs> it, like race to race. You know, I, I love doing it. So we hope that everybody jumps on board. It's been a really robust competition these last few years. And people chat about it on Twitter and all, on Facebook and all that kind of stuff. So I'm sure we'll see lots of uh, banter about the, the Fantasy League. So really exciting. Yeah, again, fantasygp.com. We might offer a special mention or a prize or something for the person with the funniest team name. We'll think about that. Anyway, um, so another final announcement that we have in this little grab bag of announcements is what's happening on Facebook. Now, some people are on Facebook, some people aren't. That's cool. Do what you want. Live your life. You've got to. <laughs> Uh, no one else is going to live it for you. But the change that we've made is that we used to have a Facebook page where we used to post things and some people saw them, some people commented. That was great. But now we've made a Facebook group. Now, it sounds like a small change, but what a Facebook group means is that anybody can post. So this has been really fun. Uh, we've we've sort of going to disengage the Facebook page soon. It's still live for now, but it's going to go away eventually. Everyone can jump into the Facebook group, Super License Universe, the Facebook group, and anyone can post. So you don't need to wait for me to write something on the website and put it up. If you want to post some news, go and do it. You see, see a funny tweet, you see a funny GIF, post it. Like every, it's gonna it's gonna open up the engagement a lot more. Go and post. Uh, you know, when you've signed up for Fantasy, give us a give us a shout out on on the Facebook group. Facebook group, get in there and join it. If you don't want to get on Facebook, I get it. No problems. We'll see you on Twitter. <laughs> We're still on Twitter at Super License. There we are. That's our social media mentions. Yeah, but that's all this the is, This has been Social Media Corner. Yeah, stop posting on Reddit and start posting on our Facebook group. Reddit, yeah. No one yeah. uses that anymore, no I'm pretty one sure. about Reddit. God, save your memes <laughs> for us. <laughs> all right, Zach. So, keep, keeping the engagement going, we have, we have actually got a, an overflowing bag full of F1 dreams hanging over from the last, mm, I want to say, six months or so. So, it's time for us <laughs> to empty out the bag. And given that this is a preseason episode, we, we, uh, we're very grateful to have something fun to talk about about you guys. So... Maybe we'll just jump straight in to hear some F1 dreams. F1 dreams. A dream come true. Really nice floaty stings on this week's show. That's what I'm noticing. It's just so... It's relaxing and it just puts me in a good mood. 
Zach, we've got four, count them four, F1 dreams to read through. Do you want to switch out on these? Maybe I read one, you read one, or you the other way around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't I go first? You feel like you've been doing it. Yeah, that sounds great. You know, it's it's hard to do all the talking. About time I lifted, oh, you know, my man, side of my the heavy tired. podcast weight that we're carrying <laughs> up these stairs. That's what we do. We carry the podcast up the stairs, and then we throw it off. And it you're, kind like, of, you're like Sisyphus, it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Sisyphean. That podcasting is a Sisyphean task. You just keep pushing. <laughs> There's always a new episode to do. There's just another, yeah. We'll keep going as long as F1 keeps going. That's the thing. Liberty <laughs> Media came to us and said, guys, we're only doing it because you're doing it. So, you know, it's, it's, it's mutually assured destruction. All right. Oh this is from Julian. Uh, thank you so much for the F1 dream. Here we go. First person, as always. If you haven't heard F1 dreams before, people send them to us in first person. And God, do we read them in first person. Here we go. <laughs> it's too hard to convert them. <laughs> Julian, I had this one a while ago while I was on a plane. I fell asleep and started dreaming that I was sitting at a small table outdoors playing a game of chess against Fernando Alonso. Then I looked down and back up, and now it was Kimi Raikkonen. I looked back down and up, and it was Daniel Ricciardo. Mate, this is, this wow. is an insane dream. So my hands are on the table, and two little girls to the right of the table walk up to me and the creepy, in creepy old long white dresses. Oh, it's a bit um, The Shining there. The smallest of the two girls is standing in front, puts her hand on mine, and the taller girl behind her put her hand on the smaller girl's shoulder, and they both stare at me. I try to pull my hand away, but I can't. The girl's skin turns ghostly white, and her eyes fully black, and start leaking out onto her face as if they were melting. There goes the calm, collected show that we were producing. (laughs) Uh, so I'm trying to say, uh, I uh, so I'm trying to say help, but it won't come out. And I realise for the first time in my life, I'm having sleep paralysis. And I look at Danny Rick for help, and he's just fucking smiling at me. Classic Daniel there. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's a real shit eating grin, Daniel. Um, so that was fun to have on a plane to wake up shocked. It also happened three times in a row because I was so si- so tired from travelling. And for the next three races, I was not Danny Rick's biggest fan because he never helped me. He just fucking smiled. So, uh, oof. man, wow, rough. That was a roller. That was a journey of a dream. I, I like the idea that there were three different drivers, and then two of them just bought, just like bailed because they probably saw these creepy girls coming. And then uh, the only one that stuck around was Ricardo, but he was just laughing. Like, I mean, there wasn't even any joke, or was he thinking of a funny Instagram <laughs> post he posted, or what? I. It, maybe he's just as gleeful at, at other people's struggles. Maybe he's, maybe it was just a fact that he was happy to winning. be alive. We know nothing of the chess game, so maybe he was just winning. Uh, maybe he'd just taken, a, taken Julian's queen. I don't know. You've cracked it. You should be a dream analyst in real life. Mm, mm. Okay, I've got the next one. This one is from Chris. Chris writes, Dear Z and R, which I assume means Zach and Rod. If you don't mind, put my name first. Thanks. Anyway, let's get into the dream. <laughs> <laughs> after years of no, no after years of no motorsport in my admittedly otherwise vivid and exciting dreams, the events of the Brazilian Grand Prix pr- prompted an utterly bizarre dream later that night. I awoke early with the fragments of memory of a dream involving Lewis Hamilton. In some unspecified way, it appeared that I had become involved in F1 and had somehow offended him. Not hard. Uh, that's my little at there, not hard. Um, a heated exchange ended in his challenging me to a boxing match. Now, Lewis is a fit young man, uh, while I will not see 70 again. We discussed the forthcoming bout at length. Some of the conversation was set in a bathroom, by which I mean a room with a bath in it. Thanks for, thanks for clarifying. <laughs> Oddly, the bath edge was about shoulder level. He and I leaned on the bathroom discussing the arrangements for the match. And at some point, he, he opined that since we were likely to be meeting up frequently over the course of the next few F1 seasons, it would be best if we got this animosity out of the way. I agree. Yeah. My hopes of success in the fight were boosted as as he shapeshifted from his current age and state of fitness to the engaging young boy to be seen in archive footage of his successful years in karting. I was slightly, though not decisively, disinclined to strike a child. (laughs) My My willingness to do so perhaps boosted by his determination to beat seven shades out of a flabby old pensioner like me the last thing i remember before sweatily surfacing to consciousness is him telling me that perhaps this fight would stop me from turning in on him again i have no memory of this collision which is probably just as well i mean this is like he's got it wrong this is max verstappen right you turn in on max verstappen and he challenges you to a fight like that's real that's not that wasn't a dream that actually happened (laughs) it's your brain just trying to organize those ideas into your currently held beliefs and hopefully you've changed that's true but now you'll know. Mm. Now, I, now, I like dreams that, that really feel like you are what it would be like to be an F1 driver, like really puts you in the, in the, the yeah. first person's view of what it would like to be a driver. <laughs> you know, that's, it's, 
it shows a vivid event, imagination. I also like the idea of trying to fight Lewis as as he was in his form when he was a karting driver. Because if he wants to take a swing at you, all you have to do is put your hand on the on his top of his head, and then <laughs> he just can't reach you, like like Austin Powers or something. So. As a tip, if you're going to have a dream, yeah. uh, just remember the lessons of Austin Powers. Exactly. Rog, should we move on to Andrew's F1 dream? Yeah. So here we go. Andrew wrote in saying, I had an F1 dream before the French GP, probably so excited about another French Grand Prix that he was couldn't, that was surprised he could sleep, really. So it was fitful <laughs> night's sleep. But here we go. Mark Webber. Mark Webber? Mark Whoa. Webber was giving me a tour of a disused Red Bull racing factory where they put the car together before transporting, transporting it to racetracks that hadn't been used since the 2010 season, and it was just abandoned. But for some reason, he was the mechanic rather than the driver, and the whole tour was organised by Kim Kardashian. <laughs> this is... We don't, we don't need to analyse this one. This one just speaks for itself. Yeah, again... <laughs> No, I would say that this is almost The Shining again. You know, the idea that you're being yeah. shown around by someone who worked uh, there, or maybe it was you, or disused, and oh, yeah. creepy. This one's creepy as well every, for different reasons. Every dream that every dream that I've had about Kim Kardashian has gone pretty much this way, where whether it features Mark Webber giving me a tour of, a, of an abandoned factory. That's what all of my Kardashian dreams are about. Don't rule it out. That cross collab could, you know, find an audience somewhere. It wouldn't surprise me hey. if Liberty Media and Porsche got together to do something with Mark Webber and Kim Kardashian. They're both influencers, and I look forward to having them both on the podcast later this year. Last F1 dream for, for this segment is from listener Ewan, which this name sounds very familiar. Let's get into the dream. So, I had an F1-related dream last night. I was at a drive day for the launch of a new car, and was standing with, my, with I was standing with the head designers for Mercedes, Red Bull, and McLaren, and the star attraction being driver Sebastian Vettel. I end up talking with these guys for an hour or more, as no one else in the room seems interested in them. <laughs> seems weird. I end up I end up telling them I end up telling them what a great fan I am of Formula One and how my brother hosts a podcast. Ah, oh, this is all coming Ooh, together. Oh, interesting. And. I, and I would love to take a photo with the four of them, mainly to rub it in my brother's face. Sorry, Rod. They all agree, load me up with merch, and stand together for a photo with me. I cast my eyes around the room and hand my phone to someone to take the photo of me and the four gentlemen, only to find out I've handed my phone <laughs> to you, Rodney. <laughs> and you do not look ha- you do not have a happy look on your face. Clearly unimpressed, you take the photo of them and turn away before I get a chance to introduce you to them all. End of dream. Thanks, Ewan. I love that your dream and my dreams have the same continuity where I obviously had several dreams where I failed to get photos with drivers <laughs> through my own fumbling and incompetence. Um, and I love that, that that your dream and my dream exist in the same dream universe. Dream of us. Yeah, the super yeah. license Rodney, the Gordon dream of us is probably oh, the best way. Yeah. The Maybe all of these dreams... Maybe all of our dreams are all in the same dream of us. Collective consciousness, Rod. I like it. Yeah. Mm. Something to think about. Yeah. Something I mean, I've been having about. dreams of winning the world championship. I wonder if they're Hamilton's or Vettel's. That I'm Let sharing. us know if you have a dream that Zach wins the championship. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love all a right. grab bag of F1 dreams. They're my favorite. Well, Zach, in terms of work that we have to do this week, that brings us to the end, my friend. So... It's exciting things ahead with Superlicense 2.0 running uh, this year. We're going to be offering up a new look show, uh, definitely rejigging things, tightening things up. We kind of sat down and thought about it, and then we were like, if we were going to make the show today, what would it look like? And I think that we've come up with a really good little package ourselves. It's quite tight, if you don't mind me saying so. Yeah, it, so, was, it uh, was this or start streaming Apex on Twitch, but we decided not to do that. Yeah, or just offer, a, like, just update our RSS feed and put in a better F1 podcast into there. So, uh, yeah, really looking forward to uh, getting stuck into Melbourne. Obviously, my home race, definitely loving. Can't, I wish I could just get about it a bit more. But, uh, yeah, I hope everyone's excited for the year ahead. Zach, uh, I know you are. And, yeah, man, it's a pleasure to be podcasting again. Oh, it's great. It's great to be back. I'm so excited for this season. You know, it's going to, the tighter show, the tighter racing. Amazing. So, so happy to be here. Don't forget, everyone, follow us on Twitter, super, at Superlicense. Join this Facebook group if you feel like it. If you don't feel like it, no sweat. And uh, yeah, Zach, man, I'll see you after Melbourne and we'll do some more chatting. Yeah, man. Do you like, trick me without that regular goodbye, sign off? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to get into it. I was going to get into it. Um, thanks, everyone, for listening. We'll see you after Melbourne. And until next time, my name's been Rodney. My name's been Zach. Pleasure. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, yeah.